So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about percents, decimals, and fractions. So what's a percent? So what you need to know about percents is that they're a specific type of ratio, and they always compare to 100. And we use this symbol after a number to show that it's a percent. Okay, some other things you need to know is that 100% represents one whole, and that percents can not only be greater than 100%, so 150%, for example, but they also could be less than 1, so the first number before the decimal point, so this would be 2 tenths of a percent, and they even can be negative to show that something decreased in value. So let's look at how we determine the percent of a value. Suppose that we ha you like three out of the five jelly bean flavors in a bag of candy. What percent of the jelly beans do you like? So the first thing you want to do is you're going to set up a proportion comparing the ratio given to a ratio comparing to 100. So on the problem, it says we have three out of five jelly bean flavors that we like. And we want to know what's the percent of the jelly bean that we like. So 5 represents everything in the bag and 100% represents everything in the bag. Well we have exactly 3 out of every 5 that we like. So we want to know what does that represent out of 100. So we're solving for this missing part and I'm going to let p equal the percent. So the next thing we want to do is we want to solve the proportion. So we can use the different methods that we've learned. In this case, I see that 5 times 20 would give me 100. So I would repeat by multiplying 3 times 20 to get my percent. And I get that P is equal to 3 times 20, which is 60. So my answer would be 60 percent because I write my answer with the percent symbol. So there's a relationship between percents, fractions, and decimals. We can take any percent and we can convert it to a decimal and we can take any decimal and convert it to a percent. We can convert fractions to decimals and we can convert fractions to percents. So what this means is that they are all different versions of right way or ways, I should say, of writing the same type of number. So let's look at converting first between decimals and percents. So remember, a percent is a number out of 100. Well, when you have a decimal value, remember place value. The first digit to the right of the decimal point is the tenths place. And the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths place. So using place value, I would say that this is equal to 35 out of 100. So if it's 35 out of 100 and a percent compares a number to 100, then I would have that 35 hundredths is 35%. Now look at what happened to the decimal point. So in this number, it's between the 0 and the 3. But where's the decimal point and the percentage? On well, the percentage, it's between the 5 and the percent value. So the decimal point moved to the right two digits. Now let's look at a percent to a decimal. So when we have a percent, we know that a percent always compares to 100. So 82% is 82 out of 100, or 82 one hundredths. And so remember, a decimal value is always pronounced with how the digits out of a power of 10. 8 tenths, 82 hundredths. And in this case, because it's 82 hundredths, we know that we would write it 0 and 82 one hundredths. 
because the two is in the hundreds place. So well, again, let's look at what happened. So we had 82% and we said it's equal to the decimal value, 82 hundredths. And so remember the decimal point is here in the percent, one, two, to get it to be before the eight. So I had to move the decimal point two digits to the left. So if I wanted to convert between a percent to a decimal, I divide by 100. And what happens is the decimal point moves left two digits. If I want to go from a decimal to a percent, I multiply by 100 or move the decimal point right two digits. Now let's look at a fraction to a percent. So when we want a percent, remember we're always trying to make it out of 100. So just like with that ratio problem, I would set up a proportion. If I have 18 out of 25, what is it out of 100? Because a percent is a comparison to 100. Since 25 times four is 100, then I would take the 18 and multiply it by four. And then four times 18 is 72. So I get P is 18 times four, which is 72. And then I would write my answer with the percent symbol because it's comparing to 100. If I'm going from a percent to a fraction, then I just need to simply write the percent as a fraction. And since the percent always compares to 100, it's as easy as taking the percentage, even if it has a decimal value in it, and writing it over 100. And then I simplify. What number divides 100? That also divides 64. Well, that would be 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. And 64 divided by 4 would be 16. And then I check, can I simplify farther? Well, 16 is only divisible by 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And 25 is only divisible by 1, 5, and 25. So that would be as simple as we can get. So if I'm converting from a fraction to a percent, I set up a proportion comparing the fraction to a number out of 100 and solve for the percent. When I'm going from a percent to a fraction, I write the percent as a fraction with a denominator of 100, and I simplify the fraction. So now let's look at converting between decimals and fractions. With decimals to fractions, I simply do what I was doing with percents. I just take the number and I read it as far as its place value. So this would be the tens place, the hundreds place. So the last digit tells me what my denominator should be, 100. And then I simplify. What divides 24 and 100? Four. So 24 divided by four would be six, and 100 divided by four would be 25. And because nothing divides six and 25 simultaneously other than one, this would be the fraction value of 24 hundredths. Now fractions to decimals, not always as easy. What I want is a multiple of 100 to be the denominator but the easiest way to do it is make it a division problem because remember a fraction bar means divide. So when we're converting, we do numerator divided by denominator. So in this case, I have three divided by eight. So since eight doesn't go into three, I add a decimal point, put it in my quotient, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add a zero. 8 goes into 30, not 4 times, but 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract, bring down another 0. 8 goes into 60, 7 times, which is 56. Subtract, bring down another 0. 
8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times, and 5 times 8 is 40, leaving no remainder. So 3 eighths as a decimal would be 375 thousandths. So if I'm going from a decimal to a fraction, I would use place value of the decimal to write as the fraction. So remember the last digit tells me the place value or the denominator I need. And then I simplify the fraction after I get it over 10, 100, 1,000, etc. If I'm going from a fraction to a decimal, I simply divide the numerator by the denominator. 